So glad you've joined us today. If someone can grab me that podium, that'd be awesome. If you're watching this, you wonder what uh, happened to our live stream is that we had some internet issues here at the office, so we are streaming this now at 1.30. Uh, so if you're watching this morning, hopefully you tune back in and you're watching us now and we're sorry about the technical difficulties. Welcome to Online Church. If you're watching this on Wednesday or Thursday, you don't know any different. But uh, either way, I'm so thankful for our worship team, production team that keeps rolling. And uh, we're excited about today and starting a new series uh, called God in Your DM. God in Your DM. And um, this is going to be a great week in our church. I want to remind you that we have our prayer room happening on Tuesday. Let me just speak to this. We've done it at lunchtime for a reason. Uh, maybe you uh, get a lunch break or maybe right now you have that day off on Tuesday, but we would love for you to join us for an hour. If you can only come for 15 minutes, come for 45 or come for the hour, we're going to have worship together, we're going to pray, and we're going to be praying about our venue this week. We're going to be really praying, spend some time on that. We've carved this room out as a time to really, uh, for heaven to hear from us, but for us to hear from heaven. We pray for each other, and it's a real amazing time. It's been the highlight of the last few months, so this Tuesday at noon, if you would make room for that. And also, as Jordy mentioned earlier, this Sunday night coming, a week from today, um, we have our open house on the 24th for worship. And again, if you're a part of our worship team, we want you here. Uh, if you're interested in joining our worship team in this season, and you want to be a part of what God's doing moving forward, we want you here. It's for our worship ministry. And as a worship team, we're going to worship together and share vision about where God wants to take us in this next season. So if you're a part of our team, join us. If you've always wanted to, and you feel there's a call in your life for worship, and, and you've you have that skill and that heart, we want you to be here next Sunday night. We're going to send an email out this week. You'll get all the information. We want you to reply so we know you're coming. Um, and we're going to have a great night. There will be food. There will be coffee. There will be God's presence. And all we need is you. So that's going to happen this week. God in your DM. I feel like I need to say this for those that maybe aren't on social media. DM is direct message. And, and there's so many things that are posted publicly for people. So many things that for people to see on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and all these. We have a public life that everybody sees, but then there are people that are close to you or people that try to be close to you. They want to slide into your DM. They want to direct message you. And they have questions or they want to share cool videos or they want to talk about things that maybe it's not for everybody to see or everybody to talk about, but they want to just ask you questions and you have that relationship. Today, we want to start a series about God in your DM. God though he's working publicly and there's things that you can see around the world, you can see things globally, God is also a personal God. He is uh, a personal Lord and he wants to speak to you directly. He, yes, we see what God's doing in the church, what God's doing around the world, but God wants to speak to you today personally. And we want to unpack this for the next few weeks about God speaking to you, how to hear the voice of God in this series we're going to be unpacking um, different weeks, these themes, how God speaks. People say, how does God speak? How do, I, how do I know? Where do I go to hear God speak? Have you ever asked yourself that? How does God speak? I heard someone say he doesn't send email, he sends knee mail. That is awful. That is, if this was in person, you'd be booing that, except three of you, including my mother, would laugh at that. But how God speaks. How does God speak? He speaks many ways. People say, I've never heard God audibly speak. There's many ways God speaks. We want to unpack that. We want to unpack... Uh, what does God sound like? What does God sound like? And it's not, uh, it's not um, James Earl Jones from CNN or Darth Vader. It's not that deep voice, Mufasa. It, how does God, what does God sound like? We want to talk to you, teach you, encourage you so you know what God sounds like, so you know when he's speaking to you. And also, how to better hear his voice clearly. What can we do that God is speaking to us? How can we make sure that we're better able, ready to hear his voice clearly. Today I want to start with this title in this series um, with God wants to speak to you. If you're taking notes, write that down. God wants to speak to you. You just need to hear that today. God wants to speak to you. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, God, for technology. And we thank you for the people that know how to help it when technology doesn't work so well. God, we thank you that um, you're with us today. And I believe you're speaking to us even now. Through, uh, through this online service and even those in person. God, I believe I need you to speak to me today. I need you to speak to us as a church and as individuals. God, we pray that you would bless us with your presence again today, more than just a service, 
more than just religion. We're asking for a relationship. We're asking, Father, that we'd feel your presence today. Father, bless those today that are watching. Those that are going through a hard time, would you encourage them? Those that are going through a great season, would you cheer them on? And God, would they feel your presence and hear your voice? Father, thank you for these moments. In Jesus' name, everybody said, let me ask you today, what's on your mind these days? Now, it's a rhetorical question, but I want you to think about that, an answer to that question. What is on your mind today? In this room, I know most people in this room really well. Uh, two of them I helped create uh, with our kids. But, but I would ask you, what's on your mind today? What are you worried about? If I asked you at your, at your most intense moment of the day that what is preoccupying you, what does your brain drift to, what's on your mind? just got a survey uh, delivered to me this last week, and in 2020 and 21, uh, World Vision with Barna actually did a survey, and they surveyed 16,000 people between the ages of 18 and 25. And they, 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 they surveyed them with a lot of things, and, and this data was fascinating to me. This is right before the pandemic in 19, 2019, in through 2020, into even the first part of this year, so up-to-date accurate, they said, 18 to 35-year-olds, what's on your mind? And after reading this and unpacking some of this information, I realized that I am 10 years past this survey, but it still rings true for me. And though you say, hey, I'm not 35, I wish I was. It's been a long time since I was 35. I think even through reading this, some of the statistics and some of the information I found that it would actually relate to us. I think it's interesting. They asked these 18 to 35-year-olds, um, What's on your mind and what are you thinking about? I think this is interesting. You'll see this on here, this statistic. 46% were uncertain about their future. That's one in two, uncertain. Not just, I don't, you know, I'm not really sure or I have questions. They felt they were uncertain about their future. I think that's fascinating. That is so much emotional um, bandwidth. That's so much uh, pressure. That's so much, it says so much about these 18 to 35-year-olds, and I'll be honest, I believe it's probably most of us watching today, 46% are uncertain about the future. There's never been a time when you can more be unreliable. Stock market, governments, health, restrictions, travel, work. It's never been more uncertain, and 46% said it's something that's on their mind, that they're uncertain about it. 44% are anxious about important decisions. And I don't know what that decisions would be, whether it be relational, whether it be vocational. But somewhere with future decisions, important decisions, 44% of them felt anxiety about it. I don't know if you've dealt with anxiety. Um, it's rare today to find people that do not deal with anxiety, which is interesting, isn't it? The Bible speaks a lot about anxiety in my own life. I've dealt with it. And I've found different ways to, to deal with it, from, from, from prayer to medicine to therapy to exercise. But it's something that we, most of us, navigate, and 44% are anxious about important decisions. Are you like, yeah, I'm, I'm a part of those, right? 41% are afraid to fail. In this statistics, you see that it's all about, as you can see this, it all involves direction. Isn't it interesting of these statistics, and these are the ones that stood out to me in this survey, and I say this rings true with the conversations I have with people in my life and our church. And all of these deal with direction, decisions, future engagements, um, 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 things you're going to do in your life. Every area of your life, they all deal with direction. Psalm 30, uh, 37, verse 23. Listen to this verse. Can I think about hearing God's voice? And today I want to remind you, God wants to speak to you. It says this, it says, the Lord directs, orders the steps of the God. So the Lord directs. Another version says, the Lord orders. I grew up learning this verse as, the uh, steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. The NLT says it this way, the Lord directs the steps of the godly or the righteous. He delights in every detail of their lives. Let me read that again. The Lord directs Steps of the godly. Do you feel, here's a question today that I'm not going to ask you to get you to answer, but I want you to think about. Do you feel that your steps are directed? Do you feel directed from heaven today? Do you feel directed? 
It's just a question I want you to think about. Do you feel like, when you go back to this, do you feel like that you have direction about the future? Do you feel like that you have direction about important decisions? There are some important decisions that are coming up in your life that you have to make. Some of you, the decisions you make in the next year, two years, three years, will determine the next 15 years of your life. They're important decisions. Do you have direction so that you don't fail, that you're not going to fall into a, um, um, a pothole of life's decisions? Do you have direction? Do you feel like your steps are directed by God? If not, it leads me to two questions. Is it because you're not godly? Or is it because you can't hear the directions? That would be the only questions I would take from that. If you feel like your steps are not ordered of the Lord, if you feel like your steps are not directed, according to scripture, you're in one of two camps. You're not godly, or you don't clearly hear the directions. If you say today, if you're honest with yourself saying, I'm probably not godly, the uh, New King James says righteous, right living. Well, today, if that's you today, there's no shame in that because this whole, um, this whole story, this whole love letter, this whole thing is about helping us with righteousness. It's not a guilt thing. It's, a, it's an opportunity. It's an invitation to what the Bible calls repentance. It's where you come to God and say, listen, I need to say I'm sorry. I need to repent. I need to confess areas in my life that are not righteous, holy, or godly. And it says God is quick to forgive. And when you confess and repent, And then change your direction. You're doing one thing and say, no, I'm going to change my direction. I'm going to go after God, go after his plan, go after his standards. And when you have that turn and you confess, God rushes in with holiness, with peace and purity. And listen, today, there is nothing that feels as good as purity. There is nothing that feels as good as knowing you're in the will of God and the holiness of God. And today, if you're feeling heavy, if you're feeling shameful, if you're feeling unclean, don't let it drive you from God. Drive it, drive you to God. And let him meet you where you are. It's as simple as this, saying, God, forgive me. Tell him what you want forgiveness for. Would you overtake me with purity? And I want to promise you, there will be a grace and a love and a weight that comes off of you and a grace that comes on you. Are you godly today? If you say, it's not that, it's, I, I, I don't clearly hear God speak to me. That's who we want to speak to today. In this series about God in your DM, is God speaking to you and how can you hear him clearly? There's so much talk in the church these days about freedoms. You can't go online or in person without people talking about their concerns about freedoms and governments taking away freedoms and they think culture taking away freedoms and we're becoming too compliant and we need to stand up for our rights and Though I have feelings on that, and I think there is some truth in some of it, I don't believe, please hear this, church, today. Please hear this. I don't believe we're being, it's not that, I don't think we're being persecuted as a church as much as we're being distracted. People say we're being persecuted. I don't think it's much about us being persecuted as we are being distracted. See, Satan doesn't need you to deny God. He just needs you to forget about him. See, persecution is about denying God. I think distraction is about forgetting. And I don't think the the enemy needs us to deny God if he can just simply make us forget about him. And this season, the battle we are in is not for denying. I believe the season we're in is one of forgetting. And part of gathering in person is helping remember when your kids are raised in the house of God and you're in the house of God and you may not be feeling God or thinking about God, but you get yourself, you have enough to know I need to be at this place at this time, whether it be online or in person. And all of a sudden you get remembering, right? God is good. God has a plan. I have messed up this week, but there is grace and forgiveness and hope. And God does have direction. There's vision for my life. And I believe that. Listen, Satan isn't afraid of you going to church. People are like, oh, Man, Satan's afraid of us going to church. That's why he's shutting it down. Listen, Satan isn't afraid of you going to church. He's afraid of you bringing God back into your home. That's what he's afraid of. Because if we keep God to a Sunday morning, to a live stream at 1130 or, in this case, 130, if he keeps us just to a live stream or to a time in person, then he's fine with that. He's not afraid of you going to church. What he's afraid of is you bringing God into your work, into your Monday, into your home, into your marriage, into your purity, into your decisions. It's not about denying God. It's about forgetting God. Listen, God wants to hear from us. 
God wants to hear from us. And we need to hear from him. This is the truth, really, the basis of our faith walk. And it changes everything if you understand this. And that's this. God wants to speak to you. I just need to let that hang for a minute. That is the basis of our faith. That is the basis. That's what separates religion from true faith is this, is that God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to you. It's interesting in Genesis, and I don't, we're not going to put it on the screen today, but in Genesis 3, 1, um, the first question ever recorded in Scripture, the first question ever recorded in Scripture was this. Satan said to Adam and Eve, did God say? Isn't it interesting, the very first way the enemy attacked, the very first temptation, the very first struggle, the very first consequence came out of a question debating the direction of God. And not much has changed in all these years. After all this time, it's still the number one temptation. It's the number one tactic of the enemy is questioning and trying to dilute or distract you from what God said. Did God say? If you remove direction, then you can eventually remove devotion. If you can remove direction and hearing from God, eventually you'll drift and you'll remove your Devotion in John chapter 10. I want to read this to you. If you have your Bible, open it. John chapter 10, verse 27. Jesus is speaking here. I want to read two verses in John 10, verse 27. It says, my sheep, listen. If you have a Bible, you can underline. I have that circled in my Bible. It says, my sheep, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. My sheep listen to my voice. Jeremiah, in the ESV version, says it this way in Jeremiah 33.3. 3, it says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. Call to me and I will answer you. God wants to speak to us. In this room, we have young adults. We have people that are beyond young adults. We have me, who is the oldest by far in the room, and I'm convinced of this. God wants to speak to us, even in the season of trying to figure out venues and lead a church and uh, leading brilliant um, teenagers in our family and my own marriage and my own life. I'm convinced to the core, and I need to remind myself today that God wants to speak to us. Is anyone else in this season, finding it hard to focus? Anyone? What was I saying? Uh, I have never had a harder time focusing, never in my life. I'm 46 years of age. I think I'm 46. Um, I've never had a harder time focusing. And I know I'm not the only one. Here's, Here's a test. Can you watch a movie? Can you watch a movie? Can you watch a sports show without checking your phone? Can you? It's impossible. It's, well, you know, and all of a sudden you, you paid this money to rent a movie or you got your family to watch a movie or you're excited about watching a movie or maybe it's a game and you're a sports and my Chicago Bears are playing today against the Packers and they don't have a chance. But I, when I watch a game, I'm, I'm excited about this game. I've been waiting for this game all week. But still, I get five minutes into it and I'm easily distracted. I've never had a harder time focusing. And I believe this is a part of what we're dealing with and hearing the voice of God. God doesn't need you to deny him. He just needs you to forget about him. We're, not, we're dealing with not persecution, but distraction. Did you know cable TV is dying? We got rid of our cable last year. We got rid of our cable as a family, and we didn't tell our kids, and they never noticed. Because my kids don't go for television. It's YouTube. It's, it's, it's social media. It's, it's other things. They, 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 they watch movies on streaming. They don't watch cable TV. And why is that? I think... There's a couple of reasons. We don't have the patience to wait for the next week. For a, back in my day, I remember we needed to wait a week until uh, you found out what happened to Uncle Jesse and, and you had to find out what was going to happen at Full House and Steve Urkel. And some of you have no idea what I'm talking about. But those that do, you're my people. And remember, you would sit through commercials. There would be like four minutes of commercial. I saw more Tide commercials than anyone should ever see in their lifetime. Why? But now it's like, I don't have time for those commercials. And we just, even on YouTube, it's like, skip the ad, skip the ad. 
We've never had a harder time focused. Facebook started with three minute videos and then Instagram says, no, no, that's too long and they put it down to a minute videos and TikTok is like, that's too long. Let's go down to 15 second videos and our focus is getting less and less and less. We're having a hard time focusing. Our attention spans, listen, have never been weaker but our need to hear from God has never been stronger. And there is a correlation in that Correlation in that, that our attention span has never been weaker, but we've never needed to hear from God more. Our need to hear from God has never been stronger. We are in unprecedented times. We need direction for our family, for our church, for our city. We are trying to reach a generation. We believe it's our calling to partner with God to reach people. It's never been more obstacles to try to do that. We've never had mental health being more of an issue. We've never had more anxiety and depression. Uh, financially, uh, food is becoming outrageous in its costs and, and housing, and there's all these problems and things that have been there for years bubbling to the surface, and we need to deal with them, like racism and other things, and we need to deal with We need direction from God. Our need to hear from God has never been stronger, and our intention spans have never been shorter. You need to know today God wants to speak to us. We won't wait to hear from God. I grew up in a time where we use words like lingering. Linger, just linger. Just, just, we use words, I'm going to go old school, come on, old school Pentecostal. Terry, we used to Terry. <laughs> like, who's Terry? Does he live down the street? No, 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 Terry. Can you wait? Dan, you remember the word Terry? Remember growing up? And, Can you Terry yet an hour? Can you wait for an hour? Can you linger? Can you, I'm going to speak to the 90s right now, can you soak in his presence? <laughs> can you just wait on the Lord? And we don't wait on the Lord because our attention span is we don't wait on the Lord when it's easier to pick up social media and go to our favorite preacher or podcast. Even when following sincere women and men of God who are leaders, we cling to their quotes and perspective without asking God ourselves. We settle for an echo when we can hear God directly. Social media, I've, I've kind of been off of it a lot recently and not offended, not too frustrated. I just... Sometimes I feel like everything's an echo, 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 echo. And I'm like, listen, I love these leaders, women and men of God that are brilliant and breathtaking and they're smart and they're anointed. But sometimes I feel like everybody's reposting and requoting and there's echoes everywhere. Can someone get a word from God? And I know this, I need a word of God how to raise my family. I need a word of God for my church. I need a word of God for my life. I need a word of God for what he's doing in my life. I don't need an echo. I need the voice of God. And we've never needed God more but our attention spans have never been weaker. You need to understand today that the desire building in you, God wants to speak to you. It's a core belief. You need to understand that. And right now, the creator of heaven and earth is speaking to you. He wants you to hear direction. One and two, worried about the future, afraid to fail, important decisions. And God's going, I know your beginnings from your end. I know, I know the plans that I have for you. I know they're good plans. I want to warn you not to go here. I want to encourage you not to miss this opportunity. I have vision and opportunity and plans. If you would just listen to my voice. And sometimes I think God is speaking, but we're so distracted, myself included. And I get the itchiness of, it. where's my phone? Yesterday, I plugged my phone in upstairs for hours, and I went through withdrawal. I had the shakes. I was like, I just need to check my, what if, what if my kids need to get a hold of me? What if someone needs to call me? And I've never needed to hear from God more. And we settle for an echo when we can hear from God directly. Maybe some of you are saying, Mike, I pray, but I don't hear from God. And shortly after this series, we're going to do one on prayer. We're going to unpack how to pray. We're going to help you how to not only for heaven to hear from you, but how you can hear from heaven, how to pray, actual prayer. We're talking about the voice of God and what he sounds like and how he speaks, but we want to teach you how to pray because we've never needed it more. How do you know you're praying effectively? You say, Mike, I pray, but I don't hear God. See, so much of our prayer is us asking God for what we need, isn't it? When I, when I get to my knees, when I'm driving in my car, our, our, our amazing son who's here today started driving this. We get his full-on license. Listen, if you never had a prayer life, you get one when your kids start driving. He's a great driver. He's responsible and all that. But when he leaves the driveway, I'm like, oh, Jesus, help me. Oh, crucified Jesus, help me. Oh, baby Jesus. Every Jesus, help me. Like, every part, just God, just help. Jesus, take the wheel. I just play Carrie Underwood as he leaves the driveway. Jesus, 
take the wheel, but so much of our prayer is asking for what we need, direction, provision, financially, relationally. Listen to what it says in Matthew 6, 31. It says, so don't worry about these things, saying what we will eat, what we will drink, what we will wear. These things dominate our thoughts. They dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows what you need. Right. See, prayer is more than asking God for stuff. He already knows what you need. God wants to hear from you, but prayer is also us hearing from God. He wants to speak to us. He already knows what we need. He wants prayer to be a chance for him to tell you what you need to know and direction. Matthew 7, 24, as I get ready to close, a passage I even spoke on when we preached from Peggy's Cove this summer. But it says this, listen, it's Matthew 7, verse 24. Anyone who listens to my teaching, notice that, listen to my teaching, and follows it, they hear what God is saying. Is a why it is wise. It's like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and floodwaters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it's built on a bedrock. What's the bedrock of what God is saying? But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on the sand when it rains, when the floods come, when the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. Today, God wants to speak to you. And I want to ask you, are you building well? Are you building well? Are you building your life well? We have some brilliant, hardworking people that I know in our circle. Even as a church, I want to ask ourselves, are we building well? We're building. There's no shortage of effort and hustle and muscle, and we're working. But the question's not, are we building? The question is, are we building well? See, life is both waves and tides. I don't know if you know this. The, the Bible talks about the waves come and the wind comes and the, the rain and the great is the disaster. I've learned this in life. There's both wind, there's both waves and tides. I heard a, a, a preacher years ago say, don't be so focused on the waves that you don't see the tide. You ever do this? I've been at the beach and you're sitting there and you got your chair on the sand. Nova Scotia is known for its beaches. Uh, Canada's ocean playground it's beautiful you can get your chair in the sand and you can be so focused on the weight look at that wave there's one place around here they got kite surfing where people are, are surfing with these huge sails and you're watching the look at that wave oh he's going to hit that wave she's going to hit that wave watch this and you're so focused on the waves you don't see the tide slowly coming up I've learned this in this season we're so focused on waves first wave second wave third wave delta wave all these waves and we don't see the tide is rising Tides of anxiety, tides of depression, tides of pressure. We're so focused on waves of this and waves of that. Did you see that story? Did you hear that event? Did you see that news conference? Did you hear what happened to them? And we focus so much on the waves, we don't even see the tide is rising. Listen, not in a place of fear today, but the tide and waves are crashing. We better build right. The Bible says to build right it starts with the belief and desire that God wants to speak to you. When he does, if we follow it, if we obey what he says, comes the waves or the tide, we'll be on solid ground. Waves come. You can't stop the waves. And in the middle of that, the tide starts rising. You go, listen, we're called to rescue people. We're lighthouses rescuing people. And I don't need to worry about the tide or the wave. Why? Because I built well obeying the voice of God. We've never needed to hear God more. Church, he wants to speak to you. Not just through your pastor, not just through your podcast, not just through, he wants to speak to you, but your life. And that's exciting. That is the motivation why we will gather here on Tuesday at lunchtime and pray. That is the motivation why we follow Jesus. That's why we gather and do this and figure out live streams and technical issues. That's why we do worship. Why? Because we're not just forming an event at our very core. The God of heaven is directing us and nothing else compares. So let me read it again. Psalm 37, verse 23. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of our lives. Not the big ones that cost over $100,000. Not the ones that when you say, I do. Not the ones that 
sign mortgages or send kids off to college, not the big decisions. It says every detail of their lives. Are you anxious? Are you worried? Are you heavy today? Do you feel like waves? Like I can't stand through another wave. If I get one more wave, if I get one more pressure, if I get one more thing crashing into my life, I'm not gonna make it. In the middle of that going, I don't remember the pressure being this high. When did this sneak up on me? When did this tide come up? Listen, it says the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of our life. Today, the worship team is going to sing one more song. And come on back, worship team. Let me ask you this question as we get ready to close today. Wherever you are, in here in person, but also at home. This is an altar experience. I want you to just close your eyes wherever you are. Just close your eyes. As we sing this song, I want you to say this really simply. God, I want you to speak to me. So we're going to get into what God sounds like and how to hear him clearly and the way God speaks, but it starts with the very core is believing that God wants to speak to you. So today with your eyes closed, just in your own words, you want to whisper it. Say, God, I want you to speak to me. I want you to speak to me. I'm listening. I need direction in every detail of my life. God, would you forgive me? Would you help me be pure and righteous? And would you speak to every detail of my life? With the waves and tides rising and the waves crashing, Would you speak to me? I'm listening today. And I will linger and listen I can't miss a thing Lord, I know my heart wants more of you My heart wants something new So I surrender all And all I want is to live within your love be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you deeper. Lord, I will open up again. Throw my fears into the wind. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. Come on, let's sing this out. You're the fire in the morning. You're the cool in the evening. The breath in my soul. All the life in my bones. There is no hesitation in your love and affection. The sweetest of all. And all I know, my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new. So I surrender all. Because all I want is to live within your love. To be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you deeper. Throw my fears into the wind. I am desperate for a touch of heaven. Whoa. 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 Oh, 
about our lives as we go about our routine. God, help us to have our focus and our attention on you. Be in our Monday, be in our Tuesday, be in the car. Be with us, Lord. Speak. We're listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, church, be blessed. Have a great rest of your Sunday or whatever day you're watching this on. We love you. We will see you next week. Have a great week.